So I wanted to take a minute to show you what a parsnip plant looks like. So this is it. Um, they can grow up to six feet high. Some of them get taller than me. They can be a very invasive weed in prairies in the Midwest. Um, also, the sap, if you get it on you, causes photosensitivity, so it can give you um, a rash that's similar to poison ivy, sometimes if not even worse, blisters and everything. So a lot of people don't want these things um, in their prairies or even in their gardens. So if you end up getting that in there, we have a parsnip removal tool that's real sharp, and all you have to do is cut the parsnip at the base and the plant will die. It's a biennial, so you'll, it won't come, um, the seeds won't come back. You'll, be, you'll get rid of the seeds and you won't have a problem with the plant next year. So I'm going to show you how to use it at the end of the video. Okay, so welcome to another edition of uh, TJ's Garage. Working on the name still. Uh, today we're going to shift from bikes and construction in the garage to out on the farm in the pastures. We got this tool that my wife uses. It's called a parsnip, whatever. We don't want to copyright or infringe anything. So basically what it is, it's a tool to remove biennials, as it called, she says, um, weeds, uh, shrubs, whatever. And this tool right here, we looked it up on the internet, and it goes from anywhere from 40 to 60 bucks delivered. And we made this exact same tool out of a $6 shovel from the local hardware store, which I, I can say Menards. So we basically um, looked at the tool, uh, figured out the measurements, made this tool, and it works just as good for a fraction of the cost. Probably cost us 6 bucks and 10 minutes of time, if that, and it works just as good. So we're going to show you how to make one out of a regular old $6 shovel from the local Menards. It'll take maybe 10 minutes at the most. And save you a lot of time and money, especially when you see how this works, which we'll show you a video at the end of this uh, video on how to make them. Okay? So first we're going to do is we got our regular shovel, got it on a block of 6x6 six six just for support. Um, if you look at it, it's, it's not really too complicated. There's just a few angles. Uh, we're going to cut it with our the grinder with a 4.5 inch metal blade. And then we're just going to tweak it a little bit. We're going to sharpen it up with our angle grinder. Give it a little buff on the end of the uh, blade so it cuts into the roots real nice and easy. So first thing we did was the master copy right here. We went three inches from the top of the heel where you push down with your foot. So we're going to just mark three inches. We're going to go pretty much with the same dimensions as this one we made last time because this one worked so well. So we're just going to come down, mark three inches on each side, make a quick mark, okay? Then obviously the point of the blade at the bottom has to be dead center, so we'll just go right up the middle with that mark ahead of time, okay? There's going to be your approximate center. All right, so we took our uh, a square. And we went towards the middle at a 45. I got to remember how to do this. Took our mark from our three inch, squared it up on the side, went inward. Okay, same thing on the other side. All right, there's your basic mark. Continue it in to the middle. Continue this one in. In the middle. All right, now you got your two angles. Now you get your forward. Uh, we can measure that one out from center, which is pretty much the width of a ruler. So we'll just figure on that. Mark it that way. It's a lot easier. All right, we got there and we got there. So we're just going to put an X where the salvage is or the waste part. So we, when we're cutting, we don't make a mistake. All right, we're on this side. There's your salvage, right? And you got your fork in the middle. You do, uh, well, you can just do a, you can do a 45. You can do it this way or you can use your square. Either way, it's gonna be the same result. There. There. Okay, 
Okay, so you got your marks, so this is going to go, this is going to go, and this. Right here. It's pretty much the same exact tool. It's going to take us less than five minutes to cut it, and you're going to have a $60 tool for six bucks. And it's going to work just as good, if not better, with our little modifications. So we'll take our grinder, our four inch blade on there, we'll make a few cuts. Make sure you're wearing safety glasses. That's a whole other story. We'll get into that some other time. Okay, here we go. Obviously you saw the sparks coming, shooting towards me. You can rotate the blade the opposite way or sit on the other side and the blade, uh, the sparks won't be hitting you. It doesn't bother me at this point. When you're cutting these, try not to cross your cuts works better, makes it stronger. You can see it's working really well. And to stop your blade, don't ever back out because the tool will buck on you. Just let it sit in the piece of metal that you're working with and kind of ease back into it and it'll stop the blade automatically instead of having it pull out and buck and hit you in the face or break, break the blade if you tweak it sideways because these blades are really fragile. I probably should be wearing gloves if anybody's asking. There you go. So that's what it looks like. You can see pretty much the same tool. Right? So now we're just going to take the burrs off with our 90 degree angle grinder. Just to get rid of the sharp edges. But we are going to put a sharp edge on the, on the very point where this point right here is going to go into the root of the plant. And you'll see that in the video at the end. So we'll just uh, buff it up a little bit, clean it up with the die grinder, and you'll have your $6 or $60 tool. Sniff removal tool. Okay, um, that's it. Six bucks as opposed to sixty. Five to ten minutes would be fairly handy with the die grinder. You could probably even use a jigsaw with the metal blade. Um, a lot less sparks, but the same shards. So make sure you're wearing your safety glasses. Um, these tools, a lot of people don't have them, but you can use a file and a jigsaw if you don't have 
a little more advanced tools to make these this kind of thing. But uh, we're going to close the video now on how this is used. So save yourself a lot of time and money if you're fairly handy and you know how to use a marker and a square and a ruler. Um, this is it, the parsnip removal tool. That's another edition of TJ's Garage. Uh, see you soon. All right, so here's a section of prairie that I previously cleared, and there's still some leftover parsnip weeds in here. I want to show you exactly how to use this tool. First, when, I'm, when I say that, you should have gloves on and you should have long sleeves because if you get this sap on you, it really is not good. I got it on the back of my neck one time and it was real bad. So, you have the base of the parsnip here, right at the ground. There's a couple little here, one here, one here, and you just kind of find where the base of the weed is. And you put your shovel right at the bottom of it. Put your foot on it and slice it. It comes right out. As long as you're cutting these weeds out at the root, it doesn't have enough energy to produce another stalk to produce more seeds. And then that way, eventually your prairie or your garden or whatever it is will be free of parsnip. So this is our prairie restoration. Just wanted to kind of pan around here. All of this was loaded with wild parsnip. And we're still trying to remove a lot of it, but we've gotten a lot done. We have a little pond. And we have a pond shack. My husband, TJ, owner of the TJ's Garage channel, he built that by hand. It's a beautiful piece of work. All of this was seeded with prairie seed. Everywhere you see the tall grass and flowers was seeded with prairie seed. And there's our pond and our little pond shack.